Hola familia, it's Alex. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I have my favorite video that I love to film every month for you guys today. So today we're doing Pan Those Eyeshadows update number. I have no idea because I can't keep up. So I'm going to share with you guys what it is that I have here today. Don't mind me, it is bright and early. And as always, it is raining. And the week that you're watching this, my kids are on spring break, so I am not home. We are enjoying the week that they have, the six days off, whatever many days they have off and we're gonna be going to museums and aquariums and zoos just trying to get out of the house and get ourselves out of this routine because we've been stuck at home for a very long time with zoom meetings and virtual learning and being home and you know the deal so I won't be here while you guys are watching this <laughs> So I'm pre-filming a lot. Anyway, so we're here for this. You're, you can care less about that kind of stuff, right? I know. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. But first, if you're new to my channel, welcome to the familia. My name is Alejandra. I'm an eyeshadow enthusiast with a dash project pan. That is something that interests you. Subscribe, join us. And now without further ado, let's get on with the update. I'm drinking my ginger tea this morning. I have ginger tea or dandelion tea every day to help me out with my stuff, you know. As you get older, you need to do stuff for your body to help it out a little bit because it's starting to be lazy. So you got to put a little pep in its step. So anyway, so we got our five shadows here, you guys. I am very excited about this update because a lot is going to be changing. But here's the deal. I keep forgetting to include my eye looks. I tell you guys I post them all the time on my insta stories and I keep forgetting them to incorporate them in these videos I am going to remember going forward to do that I'm just gonna throw them in between as I'm talking and not necessarily dedicate a part of the video to my looks because I find that to be like you guys probably don't want to see that you just wanted me to throw it in between I'm gonna do it for this video but it's gonna be very difficult for you to see these shadows because a lot of these shadows were not are not predominantly uh, shadows that I used in looks. And what I mean by that is none of these shadows really did I use all over the lid, all over as a smoky look. These were all companion shadows, if that makes any sense. And I'll explain that to you guys as I'm sharing with you guys the update of each of them. So you get what I'm saying because when I share with you guys looks, you're going to be like, where did you put it, Alex? Where on your eyeballs is it? Because I don't necessarily tell you exactly where I place it on my insta stories I just show you the look and tell you exactly how many shadows of these I use so just understand where I'm coming from because I know it can be a little bit confusing but I just want you guys to get where I'm coming from so as always we're gonna start out with the one that I've used the least and for that is my cargo Shanghai this was rolled in last month in the last month's footage you will see that it was basically brand new I may have swatched it once or twice used it once or twice in its lifetime nothing where I you could see a very nice type of usage to the shadow and as you guys can see now this shadow is still basically the same these have a lot of product in them I've only used this shadow four times and I'm gonna explain to you guys how I incorporate this shadow I am wearing it today so I'm not showing you an actual footage of me wearing it. It's on my lower lash line. Sh I'm gonna tell you this right now. How I do this project pan, I'm gonna give you my little tips and tricks on these kind of shadows. How I incorporate my pan those eyeshadows in my looks. Shadows like this, satin finish shadows, always will be on my lower lash line. That's how I use them. I I want an impact on my lid. I want something shiny and sparkly. And if it doesn't give me that, nine times out of 10, these type of shadows I use on my lower lash line. And that's where this one is today. I've used this four times and all four times, that's where I've used them. The only way I will use a satin shadow on my lid is if I top it off with something else. I top it off with like a glittery type of shadow, a shadow that gives me some sort of sparkle, a shadow that'll give me some sort of dimension to this and this is being used as a base. That's how I use my satin shadows. Not necessarily ones that I love on my lid unless it's like for church or like somewhere where I need it to be a little bit more subdued look, then I'll put it on my lid. But other than that, these go on my lower lash line. So this, you won't see pan on this. You're gonna see at least some sort of more roughage on there. You can see like it's a little bit roughly used right there. You'll probably see more of that. I have to use this, what, 16 more times and I can guarantee you it's not gonna be hitting pan. These are very, very densely packed in here and very deep pans. 
it'll take me years before I hit pan on any of these. So this is going to stay in here. I'm pretty sure I'll hit my goal next month and roll it out. All right, the next shadow that we have is the Nomad palette by Juvia's Place. This one, I would, I had usage on it. I think I had maybe like 12 uses of it last month, and I had a nice dip going in the center of this shadow. The main way I use this shadow is as a liner. That's another reason why you're not going to see a lot of looks just predominantly with this type of palette. Now, as you guys can see, I have major dip in here. Like that's a nice dip. And I knew I wasn't going to hit pan on this because these shadows are very pigmented. And the way that I was using it didn't necessarily allow me to have a lot of like a lot of space to use it. So I did end up using this 20 times. So I am going to roll it out. The main way I used it was on my shadow line. Like I just nudged it in there to kind of deepen my lash line. And it made me, and it, I liked it because it wasn't black, it wasn't brown. It was like a dark green and you can kind of see it up close. But from afar, it just looked like I had some sort of smudged out shadow on it. Really enjoyed it. Again, you're not going to see many looks with this one predominantly all over the lid. I think I used it once all over the lid. And then after that, I just mainly used it as a shadow liner. Like I said, all these shadows that I'm going to share with you guys were companion ones. That's how I used this one 20 times rolling it out. I'm happy that I got use out of it. I knew I wasn't going to hit pan. Those are a lot harder to hit pan on, specifically matte shadows. So I didn't expect to get a lot of bang for my buck for that one, but I'm happy that you can see a dip in it now. Now we have the NARS um, Inferno palette. This was brand new when I brought it in, never been touched, never been used. You can see that it was a glistening type of shadow. This was a topper shadow. So again, you're not going to see any looks where you're going to be like, oh, I noticed that it's on there. This was more of a shadow that I used on top of anything that I wore. So here is what it looks like now. You can definitely see that I have used it. Using a brush really dug into the the pat the pan in here but I didn't want to dig into it it was a lot easier for me to use it with my finger and that's how I ended up using it I ended up using this 20 times you guys and this saved my look quite a lot and what I mean by that is there were certain shadows where I just needed a little bit of oomph and then I would put this on top and this just melted with the shadow gave it a glisten but didn't actually show white on my lid it was beautiful so for instance if I were to put this on top of this purple it would enhance the purple make it sparkly but it wouldn't show more white on my lid it, it's such a beautiful shade I really enjoyed every single bit of it I think this is a great shadow if this was a single I'd use this almost daily for any look that needed a little bit of help a little bit of oomph any satin shadows this I would put on top and it would look great. So this is also getting rolled out 20 times and uh, I'm happy that I rolled it in. It's a really, really pretty shadow, at least that one that I used in here. The fourth palette that we have is the Bomb Meet Matrimony. I rolled this in. It was brand new. I had not ever touched it. And I told you guys I probably would hit my 20 uses this month because it was an easy one. And now as you guys can see the shadow, it is definitely used. I don't have much of a dip because I was using more of a fluffy brush all around the shadow, but you can see in the up close shot that it looks very used compared to the rest of them. This was something that I used all over the lid. Today was the last day I used it all over the lid. Actually, I used it extra because I used it again today. I just enjoy setting my, my primer with this. It's really pretty. It wasn't so thick on my lids where it made everything skip. It just was a nice shadow. It had a little bit of a pinky hue to it, but I didn't mind it. So I did get my 20 uses out of this, and this is also going to get rolled out. So, so far, you guys, we have still one in the running and three are being rolled out. So let's talk about the Jouer one. This is the second round this was in. Last month, I had told you I probably used it twice, I believe. I still had to get my groove on it, figure out how to use it. It was a really pretty shade. And as you guys can see now, I have officially hit pan on that shadow. This shadow was a shadow where, again, I figured out that if I used it on my lower lash line, it gave me the best look. I didn't really like it on my lid because it was more of a satin finish. If I were to put something glittery on the bottom or on top of it, I really liked it. But mainly I used it on my lower lash line. A lot of my looks in March and February were very deep and sultry. So this just works so well to incorporate some sort of earthy tone, but still vibrant enough to show from a distance on my lower lash line. So again... Any looks that I'm popping on the screen will only show this on the lower lash line. It wasn't predominantly on my lid. 
I ended up using this a total of 12 times to hit pan on. So I am happy that I actually got pan at least on one shadow this month and not just the 20 uses. Now before we get into my last three months of looks as far as the swatches and what I'm picking next month, if you guys follow my channel, you guys have seen that I'm doing a ranking video of all the palettes that I'm using every two months and that includes palettes in here. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up and I will probably do it again and remind you guys when I do that ranking video in May what palettes will be in there. I did get a chance to use this palette just not that shadow all around so this will be in the ranking video. This palette will not be in the ranking video because I only used this shadow. I didn't really touch any other shadow in here, so there's no point in me ranking it because I only use one shadow, so this will not be in the ranking. Same goes with this one, the NARS Inferno palette. I wanted to use other shadows, but I only use this one because in this palette, truthfully, there's only really like two mattes. This is a true matte. The other ones are more of a satin finish. This one's the other matte in here. So you have a red matte and a black matte. All the rest were all shimmery shadows, glittery shadows, and I did not want to take away from the other shadows that I was using or pigments that I was incorporating in my shot, my stash, to try to use this because this was only like a one shadow palette. Like I could only pull one shadow out of here to use on my lid. And if I was going to pick one to use on my lid, I'm going to use the one that was in the pan, those eyeshadows. So this one, I did not use any other shadow, but the one that was in this project. So these two will not be in the ranking video. The Jouer one, I did use all around. You guys can see that I've used these. I use these up here. I end up using this gold one and I really enjoy the formula. This is not my first Jouer palette that I've tried or own. So I really like the formula. Of this. So this will be in the ranking because I did get a chance to play around with these shadows and not just the one that I was panning. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. So now let's go on, check out the stories, the color stories that I've had the last three months and we're going to roll in new one. All right, you guys, so that means we're gonna be rolling in four new palettes into this project pan. Very exciting for me because I normally don't roll that many in unless it's the beginning of the year. So we're gonna go ahead and put in how many palettes I have. Okay, so we're gonna randomize all four right now and then I'll share with you guys the four palettes and then we'll randomize the single shadows that we will be pulling out of those. So here we go. 249. 77, ooh, 624, holy crap, oh crap, I just saw that one, 118, so, all right, you guys, so let me tell you guys what I'm pulling out, and then I'll pull them out, and then we randomize those shadows, oh, all right, oh, 249, wow, it's the Juvia's Place, the Zulu palette, how exciting, Oh, I'm so excited about that one. Okay, I'm crossing fingers for that green one. That'll be fun. 77, what? Okay, fine. Coastal Scents Fall Festival. That one is a pretty color story and I can see myself incorporating that in the summer. I'm always pulling out my Coastal Scents shadows. 624, I did see because it was at the bottom as I was rolling in and you guys, wow, I am shocked. 624 is the Viseart Theory Cashmere one. That is a very neutral eyeshadow palette. I think it's more cooler tones. I've never panned or tried to pan a Viseart shadow. So this is my first time doing that, which is exciting. We'll see how that goes. And then 118 is, oh, my ColourPop Ooh La La palette. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is exciting. Let me go pull all four of those palettes out and then we're gonna randomize to see what shadows we will be pulling out of each of them. All right, you guys, so here is the Zulu palette. If you don't remember what it looks like, here's what it looks like. Please don't give me the brown. Please don't give me the brown. That'll be my luck, you guys. So let's, it's, I have it one through nine already in here. Let's see, number eight. Okay. So we're doing this red one. How exciting, you guys. I'm excited. I am excited. All right, so this is the first shade that we are gonna be pulling in, very exciting. So now here's the next one, which is the Cashmere. And I told you guys this one very, uh, 
you know, blah, this is how it actually goes. So it's very, you know, every day, which is fine. I don't mind because I still have it in here. So I still love it, obviously. So let's see. We're going to one through six, four. Ooh, that's a nice one to roll in. This one is like a cooler tone. Oh, this is going to give me the opportunity to use a color tattoo because I can use a color tattoo with this one. Well, that's pretty. Oh, I can even put this one on top of other shadows. Okay, so far so good. I'm not complaining. Moving on to the next palette, which was the Fall Festival. This is what Fall Festival looks like. So obviously it looks like fall, like my shirt. So I have an opportunity to roll in something fun. So let's see. Let's see what we get. Number 11. Of course, Alex, why? Out of all shades, you're going to get the, <laughs> the bronzy one, which, okay, it's better than the black, I'll tell you that, or the brown. So that's this one right here. It's more like, ooh, that's pretty though. Okay. There we go with that one. These two look so pretty together. Very exciting about them. And the last one is the ooh la la, which you guys, if you don't know what that one is, here they are, nine shades. Okay, let's roll that. Number two, okay, it's a matte one. Soft ochre, which is right here, which I think that'll go really nicely with the red one. Ooh, yeah, that would. This is gonna be pretty all around. These are my four new shades. Let me, let me swatch the last one and then we'll wrap it up shall we all right you guys so this is my color story look how exciting i am thrilled beyond thrilled for this one i'm very very exciting now as you guys know this is going to be my priority which is the cargo shanghai but i think that it'll go amazing with any of these you guys like i am so happy so so happy i got two mattes and three shimmers in here and they're all very different i if you guys follow me on my panning instagram i decluttered almost more than half of my color tattoos i ended up keeping only two four six eight ten i think about 12 color tattoos and they were all ones that I know I'm going to enjoy and love. So I have 12 of them left and then I have about like 10 of the neutral ones that I use all the time. So that's not a big deal. But as far as the color bases, I only kept 12 and I think that I have a few that will work really well with these all over the lids because I'm trying to use them, incorporate them more into my look so they don't really dry out anymore. But I'm excited, you guys. Stay tuned for my Instagram. I will be posting a lot of looks with these and I will make sure to include incorporate them in next month's video as well. If that's something you guys want me to continue to do, I'll do it throughout the whole video. This is fun. I'm excited. I am excited. This month is gonna be exciting. Like you guys, if you could feel my joy and excitement, I literally want to get up and dance because this color story is exactly what I was hoping for since the beginning of the series. Okay, you guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I will have the rest of the playlist up on the screen with other videos up in here. Everything in the description box that you need to know will be there. I'll catch you guys in those videos. Until then, adios.